right. Ooh. You gotta admit, even from seeing me sit here just uh, in a forest, in nature, it's pretty relaxing, right, to just see those images. You know, I could recommend more people to just make a, a regular habit of going once in a month, like for a weekend, just go through the forest, camp somewhere, and just be surrounded with just nature. <laughs> Gonna eat my delicious noodles, which should, the water should almost be done. I'm reading a book, which is actually a book that I've read before. The Untethered Soul, The Journey Beyond Yourself. Um, I've read this before, but I actually bought it for a friend. And um, I still had it in my car and I thought like, well, this is like one of those books that never hurts to read again. The one thing, oh, let me see if I don't. <laughs> this happened once that I, you know, it was almost finished my food. This was in Iceland. And then I kicked it over. Um, but the book is um, about a force that actually creates all of the suffering in someone's life. Your thoughts. If I would say to you in person, you suck. It is not me who is making you unhappy with that actually. I might make you unhappy in that moment when I said that, but it is you who is keeping that alive. It is you who's keeping those words alive in your head through thoughts. Right? And this is just a very simple example, but it goes for everything. And many people hold on to these thoughts that created pain from a certain events and they just repeat it in their heads all the time over and over again. And some people hold on to it for a day, but others for a week, a month, to years, to even a lifetime. And out of my own, you know, uh, experience, like when I lost my dad, it is like that's, uh, you know, a, a pretty traumatic <laughs> event, uh, not a pleasant one by far, but it is me who is actually keeping that event alive, right? And for many years I did, I just repeated that event in my head, uh, you know, losing him, uh, which was painful, and but I kept that alive through my own thoughts. Um, but alright, I'm not gonna keep talking about that. I'll link the book down in the description and uh, with a little brief summary what the book is about, but check it out. It is a highly recommended read for for anyone, I would say. Um, yeah, but alright, let's those noodles. It takes a little bit of time actually. There's like one dog over there who is gonna bark the whole night, I think. Yeah, it's a good guard dog, I guess, but um, yeah. <sighs> This is gonna sound so ridiculous to some, but it is mostly when something is unfamiliar or when we don't look further, that's when something sounds weird. It's a technique and um, you can apply this everywhere directly. And it's being aware of the world being alive. So that the world is moving all the time. And the way to do this, it's sort of a meditation practice. You just sit down somewhere and look at you know just one scene and look at one thing that is moving 
and just keep your attention on that for a couple of seconds. And then when your eyes catch something else that's moving, follow that or look at that for a couple of seconds. And then when something else is moving, put your attention on that and look at that for some seconds. And what this technique actually teaches you is that the world is alive. It's moving all the time. There's a million of things going um, around, a million of things that are alive. And um, if you are not feeling within you alive, knowing that the rest of the world is alive can actually help you feel alive as well. Okay, Google, tell me how awesome I am. Just let me check my top 10 coolest people list. Yep, you're number one. Looks like you just barely beat Beyonce.